My name is Patrick Ritbomik. Uh, uh, I'll be talking about doing uh, IO and Scala, or my experience doing IO and Scala, things I learned, and I wrote a little library to make my life easier and uh, my experience and sharing it with you. So, yeah, so when I talk about IO and Scala, I, I specifically mean uh, file system IO. So this is things like reading a string from a file, like or writing something to a directory, or listing a directory, uh, maybe some of like the Unix uh, utils like changing the ownership, chmod, zip, unzip, um, uh, MD5 of a directory, moving, renaming, all those kinds of uh, operations, like file system operations. So I'm not going to talk about uh, network I.O. or any other kind of I.O., basically just file system operations in this talk. So unfortunately, in Scala or in Java, doing, I would doubt everyone would, anyone here would get this correct on the top of your head right now. You would, uh, and it's because it's just, you have to write five, six lines of code to do any of these. So in some cases, maybe more. And uh, unlike in other languages, if you come from Python or Go or Ruby, like most of these operations are really simple. And at least for me, I can write a Unix command line up to do any of this much faster than I can write Scala code to do this. And that's not ideal. Like, that should not be. I am generally faster in coding in Scala than in Unix, but except when it comes to doing file system operations where I know how to use the command line better. So what do most people do? Like, they go and Google and uh, find things copy paste from yeah st stack overflow um, okay yeah i mean this is my point um, like how to read a file in scala i took the screenshot a long time back uh, it has more and it has like 200 people favorited it a lot more started and how to write a file in scala again and the funny thing is the top to the accepted answer here and the accepted answer here don't really work. Like this, this one suggests a library that the last commit was in like seven years ago. And this one, the accepted answer is beyond the screenshot, is actually buggy. It leaves a file handler open. It never says how to close it. So even copying, pasting from Stack Overflow might bite you. So, right. Um, so let's look at something really simple. Uh, you want to append a string to a file, and how are you going to write that? So OK, this is what it looks like. Uh, using no other external library, you create a file output stream. And I don't know, in Java, in Java you cannot name your parameters, so I don't know what that true does. Uh, you have to ask your IDE. And you create a buffer writer, pass in an output stream writer from the file output stream. You append the text, and you close all of these. And this is the simplest code I could write uh, to append a text to a file. And OK, I mean, yeah, six lines of code, OK. But really, like, you shouldn't have to write all this. to like, And you probably got to it from Stack Overflow anyway. So you shouldn't have to write all this. So. Again, and there are a lot of things that this doesn't even do. Uh, like, what if the file does not exist? What do you get? Like, would it create the file for you and append to it? Would you get an exception? It's not obvious. Uh, what if you're writing to a, a directory, or you don't even have permissions to write to the file? What kind of exceptions are you going to get? Again, these are unknown things. And something even basic, like, let's say you're writing to a file. That file is a symlink to another file. Would you get an exception, or are you going to follow the sim link and append to that file? You don't know. I mean, this code is not obvious from this code. It's not obvious from this API. So yeah, there are problems to uh, even doing basic I.O. using what's available out there. So OK, that was easy to look down upon Java or something. And this is Java NIO 2. So this is the new. Uh, an I.O. library that came out in Java 7, which is supposed to make your life, I.O. life easier. And this is an example. So you're given, so in an I.O. 2, they said, okay, java.io.file is the old one. Let's try a new one. It's the java.nio.path, which you should use. So all their APIs are based on that. Okay, fine. Uh, so you want to copy 
from a source to a destination, and this is what it looks like. Oh, this is great. I mean, why do we need I.O. library? This, this is one line of code. Until you read the documentations. So it says only files can be copied, and only empty directories can be copied. And it's in, it's in the Oracle docs. It's nowhere else. So what happens when you actually try to copy a directory that has files in it? You get java.nio.file.directory not empty exception. <laughs> and <laughs> so you thought you, you, were be, you thought NIO saved you. You got this one line of code. But no, no, it didn't save you. It actually, you just are in a whole world of pain when you run the code. So how do you actually copy directories in Java? So I actually went to the Oracle website. They have an example of how to actually do the copy if they had written it the way people would have expected them to write it. And I did a most faithful idiomatic Scala translation of that code. And this is how you do a recursive copy. I'm not kidding. You thought you could uh, just copy, write a recursive method which would copy, but it's not that efficient. You have to use the walk file tree because the op operating system might let you walk the file system faster than if you just do a, a naive recursive Scala copy. So OK, this is how you do it. And obviously, this is code that you wouldn't know on the top of your head unless you've been doing Java programming for many years. Are you the guy who wrote this API? So again, this, uh, this Oracle's example, you can go to this uh, web page. It doesn't even answer the questions I raised earlier, like symlink handling, uh, file, um, permission errors, whatnot. So, let's, uh, so that's just to give you a taste of what the problems out there. So what are the solutions available? So let's first look at Java solutions. Being in Scala, it's nice. We can call any Java APIs. So there are these two very good libraries. I have nothing against them. Uh, Google Guava library and Apache Commons IO library. Um, if you don't want to use better files or something, this is, you can go use it. It works. It's used in production in Google. So great. Um, the, there are minor inconsistencies that I, as a Scala programmer, that uh, it's always that get a little bad taste in your mouth when you have to call some Java library because it's not idiomatic. Um, for example, all, when you use Google Guava or Apache Commons, you always have to do some kind of IO util dot do something, and you pass the file in. And in Scala, we can have implicit decorations, and you could have done this. Of course, you could write your own decorator on the file class to do this all for you. And other stuff like uh, Java has a nice scanner class. I don't know how you know. Uh, many of you may not know it, so it has a little util which can slurp inputs from different files, streams, whatnot. And they have all this dot next int, next boolean, next string, whatnot. Um, in Scala, we could have used something better. You could have put a next and passed it as a type parameter. You didn't have to have 17 dot next methods like the Java one has. But I have nothing against them. These are just minor stylistic idiomatic complaints that I have. Uh, so they work OK. Plain Java and IO, as I showed before, it's full of traps. Don't use it. Like if you want to cl count the number of lines in a file, that should be easy. This, should, this is what it looks like. This does not work. It has a bug in it. It actually opens a file handler open. And you, you wouldn't know that, because it's return something that needs to be closed. So uh, this is one of my favorite examples. So not only the library can do something that you don't expect to do, like it can introduce bugs in your code. Like if you run this code enough times, you would have too many file open exceptions down the line. Uh, and it's just way too verbose. So something as simple as changing the ownership of a file given my string ownership is this. You do files.setOwner. You get the file system. You get the user principal lookup service. And lookup principal by name, and that's how you do it. I mean, this is a lot of code. And there's no way you would have guessed to do this. I mean, you just want an API which takes in a file and a string, and you should be able to chmod or chown it. OK, so enough about Java. So what exists in Scala? Let's look at it. <clears throat> So there's a Scala standard library, scala.io.source. 
it doesn't solve most of the problems. It can maybe do reads and writes like anything else, like moving directories recursively, chmod, zip, unzip, uh, listing, um, and uh, merging directory, splitting. It doesn't do all of that. So there is Scala I.O. That's the answer that was mentioned in Stack Overflow a lot. But uh, I've, well, one is that it seems it's abandoned. The last commit was in 2012 that was updating the readme. The actual commits were even farther back than that. And it tries to do a lot. It tries to introduce abstractions that does not, that exist in Java, like all the print writers and buffered readers, and tries to have a parallel Scala world. So it's pretty ambitious, and now you have to have two mental models. You not only have to be aware of the Java I.O. APIs, now you also have to be aware of the Scala I.O. APIs. So the third option is Ammonite Ops. This is a, a great library by Howie Lee. Uh, I have not much against it, um, except it's two things. It is actually was intended to be used in the Ammonite library, which is a very awesome shell uh, library where you can write Scala in a shell-like environment. And for that reason, it has a syntax that's reminiscent of the shell. Like, if you want to remove a directory, you do this. Um, this, this is not Scala that we are normally used to. It fits great with the use case of this library, which was, it was originally intended for the Ammonite shell, and it works great. The other minor thing I played around with this library before I wrote this library was uh, it doesn't do something. Let's say if I want to add a text to a file and I want to not use the default codec, use my custom Scala.io codec, or if I want to give a custom link option saying, OK, when I append to this file, make sure if it's a symlink, I don't want to append to it. But, or maybe I do want to follow the symlink. So Java lets you do that. You can pass in all these options. Um, it was just not possible in Ammonite, at least when I looked at it. <clears throat> and the last option is always roll your own. So if you actually do a search for ioutil.scala, you'd find so many libraries that use it. Uh, Play has its own ioutil inside it. SBT has its own ioutil inside it. Even the Scala compiler has its own ioutil inside it. Um, and they do the same thing over and over again. Um, and we're all familiar with dry, do not repeat yourself. Uh, but I think a more important takeaway would be uh, do not repeat other people. If someone already has it, we shouldn't be like, using the same util class in all our libraries. So, and the last option is this, this is the one I'm talking about, better files. It's, it's a really bad name for a library, but I'm stuck with it. So the reason I'm stuck with this name is I started adding implicits to this Java file class. and it was, I called it the better file implicit class, and that's how it, the name started. Anyway. <clears throat> so before I go through a tour of the library, um, I want to talk about like, designing an I.O. library in Scala. Like, the, so Scala attracts a lot of different ideas, a lot of different developers who come from different backgrounds. And they all have different ideas of how, about how to do things. Um, so let, let's talk about I.O. So even in I.O., there's, there's the, the people who uh, come from the very strongly functional background. They feel that, OK, I.O. has side effects. It should be captured using the I.O. monad. Uh, it should be completely exception-free. Uh, completely side effects should be isolated using monads, so on and so forth. And we also have uh, other ideas, like we have the ACA reactive streams philosophy, where OK, I.O. is just moving data around. Maybe we should model it as streams where you know, you, using some flow matrices, source and sinks, you pipe things around. And we also have uh, Scala.js, which is coming up. A lot of people are using it. And uh, I.O. is in, inherently, it has some special things. It is slow, so people would like to do it asynchronously. Should, should the library be asynchronous? Or you can always wrap it in a future and the library by default is synchronous. Or what about exception? I.O. Is inherently has a lot of exceptions that can happen, like you may not have permissions, the file might go away. How do you capture that? Do you put it in the type system? Do you throw exceptions happily like Java? Or expect your upstream users to wrap it in a try? Or you do some kind of things like what Node.js does, where you do a callback which on success, on error, and you do stuff. 
And not only that, we also have a lot of Java baggage to deal with. Like, a Java has a lot of these print writers and output stream writers and buffered readers and input stream readers. And we, I, I don't know on the top of my head which one does what. And uh, you have to, in Scala, you sometimes have to deal with them, unfortunately. And uh, so how do you incorporate that? And at the end of the day, you just want to get things done. You just want to write something. And I, I mean, it's, it's not here. There's also a new thing that's coming up in Dottie, which is uh, uh, capturing using side effects in the type system. So that's another way of looking at things. So my point is, writing a library in uh, especially something like I.O. In, in Scala is interesting, because you have all these ideas that flow in. So better files is my very extremely opinionated way of doing things. Um, if you can see a manifestation of this discussion here, where there was a slip open on Scala to write a better I.O. library, and the discussion went on and on and on, and nothing happened because everyone thought their way of doing was the best way. <clears throat> OK, so, so as I said, these are my completely opinionated design goals for better files. So one is you should not have to import any other library. So when I um, wrote the initial API, um, I looked at all the major I.O. libraries, which is Google Guava, Apache Commons, the Java and I.O. utils itself, and this is another Java library called Jod. It's very nice. Um, I looked at them, made a list of, OK, all, these are all the I.O. utils that I, anyone would ever need. That's a super set of all these four libraries, and put them in this one better files. And it should not have external dependencies. Um, uh, this is just for aesthetic reason. I didn't want to depend on any other library. Uh, it should just depend on uh, Scala or Java <coughs> JDK. And it should, it should not do something advanced. Like All it should do is uh, wrap Java and I.O. and remove the idiosyncrasies and the weird corner cases and surprises that Java and I.O. has, and it should just smooth it out. It shouldn't do anything advanced. And again, um, no, I, there is no new concepts like Scala I.O. tried to introduce. Like you, you just have the file class, and this just adds helpers to the file class, our implicits, and you get a new, and that's it. There's no new Scala equivalents of print writer or anything like that. Um, and the APIs should be obvious. Like, as we saw the copy example, it's not obvious. Like, when you look at it, you expect something, and something else happens. So, uh, it should, this, the, the library should not surprise you. This one is interesting. Scala has a very advanced type system, and we could prevent some operations at compile time. Like, if you have a directory and you're writing to it, maybe we can prevent that at compile time. And the opposite, if you have a regular file and you're listing it, that should not be allowed. And we can prevent that at compile time by using a class hierarchy. <clears throat> and another thing that's painful in Java is like some, it's, so in Java A7, they introduce um, resource management. You can do the width thing. Uh, but Many APIs, uh, may, you may forget to close some resource. And in, uh, I, the, this library um, is the least surprise in this way. Like, it will try to close the resource for you as much as possible. Um, and again, you should be able to configure it to your wishes. For example, if you want to follow a link, if you want to write in a custom codec, you should be able to do that. But to use it, you shouldn't have to specify seven API parameters. So all of them have the system defaults or same defaults, but you should be able to configure them. So the library is well tested. Uh, it has 100% test coverage. I tried to, this, this talk motivated me to improve the documentation. So uh, hopefully it has uh, documentation that you'll be able to read. Um, next is performance. This library is. Uh, it's not slower than Java. It's as fast as Java. There's a little asterisk because uh, there are some places where this library is actually way faster than Java. Uh, for example, scanner in Java uses regexes. This does not. This uses a parser combinator, so it's way faster. So yeah, it's fast or faster than Java. So, whoops. 
Yeah, so uh, the last is, uh, this, uh, again, how we lease article about the principle of least power. So the core of the library is not reactive, not monadic, not effect-based, not pure. It doesn't do anything. It does the least powerful thing to get I.O. done for you. If you want reactive, you have to wrap it. If you want pure, you have to put it, wrap it around with a try. If you want something effect-based or asynchronous, you just wrap it in a future. It's up to you. And that's not bad. Like many of you in this room might disagree with it, but uh, that has not been bad. So if you want advanced things, you can always build on top of the, the solid core, uh, but it's hard to build advanced things from ground up if you don't have a solid core. So the goal of better files is to give you a solid core so you can build higher order libraries with higher abstractions uh, on top of it. So for example, there's a simple file watcher in the library, and um, there, there is an akal based actor-based file watcher built on top of it. And same for the scanner class. There's a simple scanner which can scan primitives, and there's a shapeless scanner which can scan h-lists built on top of it. So I'll take a uh, quick tour of the library. And, and for this talk, I will just use the GitHub documentation because I want to make sure the docs are up to date. So can you guys see it? No. Better? OK. So this is the GitHub page. Um, uh, let's look at the docs. So there are various ways you can instantiate a file. The most the recommended way is just pass in, in the argument. But there are other There's a little string interpolator. There's a little string DSL. You can convert a Java one to the Scala. Or you can use this little front slash DSL if you want to do some path manipulation, whatnot. And everything comes with, in one import. Um, and you might notice that I use the word file. Uh, so this might clash with if you're also importing the Java one. So you could always do this. You can always import Java one as the file and rename the better files one. I personally do the other way, where I rename the Java one to J file and import the better files one. But that's up to you. Anyway, um, some, again, read writes APIs are really simple. You just append, read, they work as expected. Um, so all the APIs are, have a fluent interface, which means you can chain them. So they usually return the objects itself. So you can write uh, nice code like this, create if not exist, append a new line, append, move to. And some operations return not the source, but the destination. So move to doesn't return the source. It returns this guy. So you can proceed. <clears throat> it also supports, uh, uh, if you don't want to load a giant file into memory, you can get back. Uh, you can do these APIs to get back an iterator. Uh, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, document, it's not in this documentation, but these are self-closing iterators. So if you iterate to the end of the file, it will close the stream for you. But if you crash out in the middle, then the stream would be left open. And again, um, the, lib the APIs all take in a bunch of uh, it has a lot of default implicit parameters, so uh, you could just write file dot write hello world. But if you want to use your own custom codec, you can pass the codec around. Um, uh, we'll go over the Scala doc where we'll see this. And it has uh, so if you might be interested in uh, integrating with the Java and I/O library, so it returns you. It gives you easy access to all of these. Uh, you can do file.new and uh, get the Java and I.O. classes. And these all take parameters, and they all have same defaults. So you could create, like this is an example where you can pass in a pen true or not if you want to. <clears throat> so similar for, uh, so the, the library also adds some helpful implicits, not only to the file class, but to all the Java and I.O. classes. So if you have a print writer, if you have an output stream writer and you're like, how do I convert it into a print writer because I need a print writer, uh, you don't have to Google it. It's, you, 
almost every Java and I/O conversions, uh, all possible combinations from A to B are encoded into the library as implicit helpers, and they all take in parameters if the conversion needs a parameter. So this is the thing that I was alluding to before. Uh, we could use the type system hierarchy to write uh, Scala type system to write safer code. So you can match the file uh, against the three basic types of files we have, which is either a symbolic link where you, where you pattern match to get the destination, or a directory and you pattern match this gives you uh, the children of the directory or you get back the regular file. And there could be other th th kinds of file which are not any of these three. Uh, depends on the operating system. So like a device file or a proc file could be one of those. And they're not captured in the type system. But um, this, this makes writing certain codes, like deleting, much easier. Because uh, you can decide, you can write this kind of code as opposed to like a if else, if else. Uh, this makes the library code a lot easier to read. <clears throat> And again, you can use the unapply syntax on, uh, many of you probably know it, like you can use the extractor on the left-hand side to, so this, you get the, all the documents inside this folder. <coughs> so this a, if you're, the Python has a globbing API, so this also comes with one. And these are the, all the file system operations you might want to do. So you know, touch, delete, rename, move, copy, link, symbolic link, all the checksums, MD5, SHA-1s. Um, again, uh, set owner, set groups. There's some uh, uh, helpers to check if a file has a lock on it. Um, and there's some uh, DSLs uh, that you can use if you want to pipe uh, or concat files from a bunch of sources to a destination. So uh, this is, again, kind of based on, um, uh, inspired by Ammonite Ops. So if you like writing Unix shell commands in Scala, you can import uh, this another one, commands, uh, and you get all these little Unixy utils. Uh, they, do the, they just do the same thing as things on the file class. They just call the file classes. Some more. Um, OS-specific APIs to find out the extension of a file. Again, these are uh, safe APIs. Uh, they return, uh, like if the file doesn't have an extension, it, 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 it returns an option string, so you get none. Um, and check for def different attributes, uh, permissions, uh, <clears throat> uh, like hidden, uh, not hidden, readable, executable, et cetera. There's also some nice tree APIs if you want to do tree traversal, like go up, go list the siblings, go down, ancestors. So uh, there's some nice sibling APIs, our parent and child APIs. And all, again, all these APIs, uh, they um, accept optional parameters, which are, uh, this is just a Java class. So this would be a good time to show the Scala doc. So. So yeah, uh, so this is the Scala doc. Um, uh, let's go to the file class. So this is the only thing that you would need. So it has all the utils in it. And you can see that something as simple, uh, again, like a, a, a lot of the complexity and uh, configurability of the library uh, is hidden in the Scala doc, not as a library user, it has same defaults. It's kind of like the collections library. If you actually look at the signatures, it looks scary, but it's easy to use. So here, OK, if you want to append a line to a file, it takes in a line. You don't even have to specify it will append an empty line. OK, besides that, there are this, it takes in two implicit options, the open options and a codec. The codec is, uh, and these are nothing new that I invented. Uh, this is a Scala dot io dot codec and this open options let's click on it what is it so this is right this is java dot nio dot file dot open option so it, it you can pass in that i want to only open this file in append mode or read write mode or follow link mode so on and so forth so 
So yeah, um, so this is pretty much the only class here. That's the file class. These are all the implicits that were added to, all, uh, to the Java and IO classes. And this is the scanner. I'll talk about it and the file watcher. So there's nothing else going on. And commands is the little Unix uh, DSL util. OK. So back to this. And um, yeah, so there's also this Chamod APIs. You can add, remove permissions. You can check for different permissions. You can compare files using if they have the same path or if they have the same content. So there's, uh, you can use the same path as or the same content as. Um, there's some helpful ordering. So when you list files, you can pass in optional ordering. So if you want to order by name, by size, by depth, so on and so forth. Uh, zipping, unzipping, again, a popular question on Stack Overflow, how to unzip, zip in Java or Scala. Uh, this library comes with uh, dependency-free zip and unzip libraries. Um, and again, we have automatic resource management. So uh, it adds this implicit auto-closed to any closable uh, class in Java. Uh, so you can write, uh, so this, if you use this for each uh, so it returns basically a traversable, and if you do this in uh, this kind of for syntax, or if you do map or flat map or over it, it will close the tr uh, stream for you. Um, <clears throat> so here's an example where I have a buffered reader and I did something with it. So if you, you can either write it in this syntax uh, using a for comprehension, or just do a map, it's the same thing. It will close the buffered reader for you when it's done. And uh, I mentioned before, most of the time when it returns an iterator, uh, for, uh, if, when you're reading a file, you want an iterator of string, of iterator of bytes, iterator of characters. It returns self-closing iterators. So when you're finished, when the iterator has an X, it's false. It will close the stream for you. But the caveat is if you don't actually finish iterating, the stream will be left open. Uh, so in that case, I would recommend using the, uh, the traversable, the auto-close version instead of the uh, iterator. Um, so Java has a little Java util scanner class, so you can scan and, and process, process inputs from different sources, from files, input streams, whatnot. Uh, again, it's not idiomatic Scala to use it, um, and it's also ex extremely slow because it uses regex. When you do next int, it creates a regex integer pattern and scans forward for it. So the, the better files one is much, it's about five or six times faster than that one. It uses a simple parser combinator underneath, uh, so it doesn't use a regex. Um, and it uses type classes, so you don't have to do next int. You can pass next x, where x has a re readable interface for it. So uh, all, there are readable defined for all the primitives, but you can define your own readables. So sorry, scannable. So here you have like an animal class, and you can define how to scan an animal. So given a scanner, you look at the next item, uh, next string. If it is Garfield, you say, OK, I have a cat, else it's a dog. And now you can just do scanner.nextAnimal. And uh, you can define your own uh, scannables this way. So the, there's also a shapeless-based scanner. Uh, again, this is not in the core library. This is built on top of it, um, because my philosophy was the core should not depend on any other library, um, uh, which lets this, this lets you scan H lists. So you can so if you have this data, you can define it as uh, I have a H list of int string boolean, and you can just scan this row, and you would get back this. I could do a whole another talk on file monitoring, how the Java file monitoring is absolutely the worst, and there's so many bugs. Uh, you can actually click on here to read about it in a separate article. Um, uh, but this I, there's a file monitor built into this library, which is built on top of the Java file monitor, and it. It, it, I, it, immune, immune, uh, it saves you from all the troubles that the Java library has. Like the Java library cannot watch a single file. It can only watch a directory. The Java library, if you create a directory inside a directory, it does not start watching it. You have to manually add the watcher to it. And um, the API is just hard to use in Java. Like you have to always do dot next, else it will watch one thing and die. Um, in here, you get a really nice interface. So you instantiate the monitor. 
And you, you have five things you can override on create, on modify, on delete. The two others are on exception and on a known event. So the OS can tell you that, I don't know, something happened to this file, but it's not any of these three. It's not always a create, modify, delete. Um, never seen that happen. But so there are this, 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 uh, this abstract class has five methods for you to, uh, to write. And that's it. This is all you do. And you can start the watcher and stop the watcher. Um, and again, uh, we build on top of this vanilla watcher that we built to build uh, uh, an actor-based one, which is based on Akai. Again, this is not in the core. This is a library built on top of better files, and where you can model file system watching using actors instead of these overriding an abstract class. So this lets you attach and deattach uh, callbacks and event handlers uh, and do advanced stuff. So that was just a quick tour of the library to get a flavor for it. Um, I, I, didn't, I don't want this talk to be just like, OK, go through the API. So I, I want you to learn something to take back from the talk. So one thing that I came across uh, while writing this, uh, in this library is I wanted a Fluent API. And Fluent APIs usually return the, ob the self object that the, at the end so you can chain API calls. But what happens when you have so something like append would return the file itself? But in this case, it's not obvious uh, when I'm moving a file, should I return myself, the source, or should I return the destination? It's not obvious. You have to go look at the doc. Um, so Better Files uses this uh, strategy. It always uses literal types. So uh, in this case, uh, for append, it's obvious it's going to return self.type. But when I move the file, it's, it's, it guarantees you it's going to return the destination. So this has two benefits. And this is a strategy I would recommend you to use when you're writing fluent APIs. Um, because it's obvious it's from the compiler, from the code, from the documentation. And you're absolutely sure that when I move a file, I get the destination back instead of some random file. <clears throat> so this is a strategy that's used all over better files. Uh, and this is just a caveat. This is a very concise of the way the better files does uh, automatic resource management. Um, this is interesting, so I put it here as a takeaway. So I define a structural type as something which has a close, which is unit. So this captures almost all the Java print writers and input stream readers, so they all become closable. So Java 7 forward, this uh, Oracle started adding an auto-closable interface to some of them. But for some reason, not all closables have the auto-closable interface on them. And then I can, this is the simplest way. Since I don't have the, I don't want to depend on Scala Z or cats, this is the simplest way I could define something monadic, which is, I say some, a managed resource of A, which is closable, is just a traversable. So the only reason I want this is so I can have access to the for each of the traversable. And then, Given a, given, a, given a closable, I can define, a, I can implicitly add a method to it called autoclosed, which would return a managed resource. So what does it do? It, it returns a new traversable and just overrides the for each. So given this f, it applies it on the resource and finally closes the resource. So this lets you write code which looks like this. So you have input stream and you do autoclosed, you get back a traversable. And again, you have output stream, you get back in traversable. And when, this is, when it goes out of the scope, it finally, when it finally applies, when it applies the function, it finally closes the underlying resources. And you don't have to use for comprehension. You can do map, flat map, and it will just work. Um, we don't have time to go over this, but the future of the library, like, um, I think Martin talked about it. Like, uh, of breaking the Scala ecosystem into two, like the core, and the core APIs versus the surrounding platform APIs. Uh, uh, the problem with the standard, uh, the standard library is that, for backward compatibility reasons, it's very slow moving. And this was one of the re reasons that was brought up in the Scala slip 19, where some people didn't even want an IO library because they said, OK, if it goes into the mainstream, it will just get frozen in time. No one's going to do anything about it, so on and so forth. But this is going over stuff that Martin talked about already. 
but yeah, this is it. Um, uh, this is the GitHub page. We have an active GitHub channel. Uh, the Scala docs are always updated. Um, the library is really this. Uh, um, there's a bunch of feature open feature requests. Feel free to send a PR on it. Um, the library is tiny. It's only 450 lines of code. There are more people who start this project on GitHub than there are lines of code. Um, most of the code that's more than it's actually 3,000 lines of test code benchmarks to make sure the library works. Uh, it's fairly popular, uh, and see thousand may even downloads per month. And yeah, feel free to contribute. All right, that's it. Any questions? I think the mic. Hi. Hey. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. It looks awesome. Um, my question is around exceptions. So you mentioned how the Java uh, libraries uh, can throw like various exceptions, and mm -hmm. uh, you have to look out for those. And yeah. I'm not sure what happens here if I try to write something. Right. And right. It's, so. Uh, this library is exception friendly, as in it will throw the exceptions in most cases. But there are other times when Java, in my opinion, throws as a really stupid exception, like directory not found exception. The library uh, has APIs to not let those things happen. But again, this is something that I, as a Scala programmer, cannot guarantee to you. Maybe in Dotty, I can have these SPO functions or something. But and Scala, it's almost, I cannot guarantee to you that I can just only verbally promise you that, hey, this is. Hey. Uh, I have a question. You said you kind of constrained yourself to file I.O. Yeah. And I think this kind of the beauty of I.O. that you unify a lot of different uh, kind of I.O. In Unix, you have the pipes right. and the uh, TCP IP, which yeah. is a little bit complicated. But anyway, yeah. you can unify it at some level. Yeah. And um, did you drop this for good, or is no, it kind no. of a first step? And this you is want a to first step. It grew out of my personal need to have a good file I/O library, so it started at that. But I don't see any reason to go to other I/O. Uh, and yeah, thanks. I have a question here. Uh, you show that uh, the scanner class. Uh, mm -hmm now uses um, a type parameter instead of uh, specialized method methods. Does that actually work with Scala specialization, or do you need to go through boxing for all the primitive types? Uh, it does not use Scala specialization, uh, but that's something that's a feature that I would like to have to, to make it faster, yeah. It's amazing that it's already faster than Java. They must be yeah. doing something pretty wrong in this case. Yeah, the Java one uses regex. It's absolutely slow, yeah. Back there. Hi. Hi. Uh, any plans to support Java 6 or 7 for basic stuff like reading and writing files? It's supported. Uh, there is an older version of the library that does support Java 7, but not Java 6 because it depends on Java and I/O, which yeah. was not in Java 6. So no plans for Java 6, but Java 7 is supported. Uh, there is a, uh, it's in Maven. So I really admire your design to keep it very simple and not introduce monads and that kind of things. But say I want a free monad to separate the effects and the running. Right. Um, do you want to keep that wholly out of the library, or are you um, open to like a small add-on layer? Th that's, that's a good question. And I think, um, so let's say, unless you want to write your own free monad class, you may probably want to use the Scala Z or the Cats one. So. There are, I know, I talked to a couple of people, they're working on better files cats, which, which, does not, which uses better files underneath, but exposes APIs, which are using the cats uh, structures. So I would, yeah, they would not be part of better files. They would be built on top of libraries that depend on better files. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for coming.